Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on the Chopin Nocturne in E minor, Opus 72, number one. And this was published posthumously after Chopin had died in 1855. This was originally written, though, when he was just a teenager in 1827, um, but apparently he wasn't satisfied with it, so it was never published, much like the Reverie by Debussy. <clears throat> that he thought was uh, kind of trashy, even though that's one of his most famous <laughs> pieces, the W.C. Reverie. And this is certainly one of the most famous nocturnes by Chopin, even though you could argue that all of his nocturnes are quite famous. But this is one that I really like giving to students early on um, in their studies of Chopin's works. I think nocturnes really embody many of the ideals that Chopin's going for, beauty, bel canto singing style how beautiful can we uh, make that left hand how dreamy can we make that while the right hand projects and shapes um, additionally this is a great environment to start learning how to use rubato effectively um, and then this particular nocturne is wonderful for learning polyrhythms so two against three rhythms three against four rhythms and also doing some ornamentation, which we'll get to later in this video. So we're gonna go through this. Um, I'll be giving you lots of different suggestions, like pedaling suggestions, um, tips for shaping and voicing. Voicing means bringing out the top line over the bottom line, how to get that left hand softer, um, how to deal with those polyrhythms, some practice methods, and many other things to help you become more efficient in your practice sessions. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna play maybe the first five or six bars here. And you could certainly take it a bit faster than that. I've heard um, recordings that go. So that's a much more um, upbeat, flowing tempo. The first one is a little more uh, melancholy. You need to have enough momentum to where it doesn't start to be plagued by left hand monotony. So you don't want to be going and be hearing those left hand beats because it is going so slowly. That's <laughs> with voicing aside, even if you keep the left hand really, really soft, if it gets too slow, you're going to start listening more to that left hand. So have an upbeat tempo enough I'd probably say this is about minimum tempo you'd want That still connects, it's still quite beautiful, but um, it's uh, definitely not too fast, but not lagging either. Okay, let's talk about a few pedaling things right off the bat. So the first thing is, uh, and I never know, by the way, I'm using Paderewski edition. Um, I ordered the Ekier edition. Um, the Chopin National Edition is sometimes what it's referred to as, and uh, it didn't have this nocturne in it. I, it's in some appendix somewhere, so I'll need to go find that. I've taught out of Paderewski for years and years. Um, I recently started teaching more out of Ekier, but it is what it is. We have Paderewski today. There are some discrepancies, and I'll point out some of those discrepancies that you might notice between your edition and Paderewski edition, um, that because I've taught this over so many years, I don't think I've ever actually performed this piece. I don't think I ever did lessons on it when I was younger, uh, but I've taught it so many times and I've played it for, you know, background music for um, dinner parties and things so many times that uh, I'm quite familiar with the piece. So, and even then, um, Chopin himself was always a little bit uh, ambiguous with what he wanted <laughs> between different publishings of editions. Now, you might think, well, this wasn't even published until after his life. I don't have all the answers for you, but <laughs> just wanted to um, give you a heads up. This is the Paderewski edition. So the first thing with pedaling, I think these, this first bar, 
you just do it in one pedal, but don't get too stormy with the C to the B. That dissonance will get really muddy if you're too loud. So you gotta keep it really quiet. And then it sounds like background noise. But if you're... That's a little too blended, a little bit too muddy for my liking. So keep it very flat and static and just um, tranquil. A couple things that you can do to make that even more. I probably would use the soft pedal for this first measure. So the uno corda pedal, far left pedal. And then release it when the right hand comes in. And you don't want to base your use of soft pedal just off of volume. So you don't wanna just say, oh, this is soft, I need to use soft pedal. I think that brings out more of a color. You wanna use soft pedal as a coloring tool because when you use the unicorda pedal, as you can probably see on that overhead cam there, it shifts the uh, keyboard over so you're only hitting two of the three strings. And so you're playing probably on newer felt that hasn't been beat to death by the same string marks over and over again. So. couple things about uh, hand movement that I want to talk about. I would flatten the finger slightly and make sure you're using very natural rotation paths. So what I mean by that is don't like lock the hand and don't feel like you only can do that type of rotation or only do this type of rotation or only move up and down. You want to combine all those. Almost think of the wrist as a ball joint that you can then move freely. So I kind of like to come down and around like that. I'll come kind of up and over like that. So rotate toward the thumb. You don't have to get scientific like, oh, Josh moved exactly like this. Do what feels best in your own hand. But I noticed that that helps because you notice that my hand kind of collapses in a little bit. I'm not trying to maintain. I can reach that. I have large hands, but... I don't need to lock my hand in that position. I want each note to be its own position, its own entity. That will keep the hand very loose. And when your hand is loose, like if your hand's just like this, and I say, you know, stroke a note very softly, um, you'll be able to do it. Now, if I say lock your hand, now play that note really softly, you might be able to do it or you might accidentally accent it. And that's the problem with tension, is it's a wild card. Sometimes you can get away with having tension in your playing, but you want to get rid of it at all possible encounters, or any any time you encounter it, um, you wanna get rid of it because your hand will be in better control. Okay, so having said that, let's just also keep the finger a little bit flatter. You don't need to go all the way to where you're playing on that part of your finger, but keep it a little bit more on the pad and stroke back slightly. That will help you to have a little bit more intimate of a touch on the keyboard, um, and you'll be able to control your hammer speed. We don't do this just for looks. We do it because it helps us control the speed of that hammer. One way I like to explain it to my students is if you think of how far the key dips down, I don't know how much that is, maybe a quarter or half an inch or something. Um, that's a very short distance, but if I stroke back and I have that uh, key dip down, it feels like I have a greater distance to travel, which gives me a little bit more control. And when I say stroke back, I'm only talking like a centimeter or a quarter of an inch or half an inch or something like that. So it's not anything major. And you may like to change the pedal twice in that first bar. I've heard people do that and it sounds nice. Just make sure it's a slow release off so it's not jerky and certainly don't want to hear that pedal noise so okay let's really I like to always uh, not always but in this nocturne style I like to stretch these grace notes so I'll come in right after this left hand B plays So uh, another really 
helpful tip that I learned from Sergei Babayan is he said when you're shaping really long lines, play them out of tempo. Uh, play it fast. First of all, that's going to really show you the shape, so it will be bigger and then come down. Now that might be an obvious one, but it really helps when you're in the thick of it. Uh, you know. Oh, okay, now I'm going to go to there and keep it big and then get softer, maybe a little more, and then back down. So that really shows you where um, the dynamics are. It also helps you with the natural pathway of the hand. In nocturnes, one of the most um, annoying things I see with students is they will do a separate motion for every single note. They'll go separate like up motion. Now, if I was having you do this, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't suddenly be bumping your wrist every single note. You'd be doing one smooth motion. That one smooth motion can be translated into a slower tempo and then help you sound more organic in your sound. Let me show you. See how nice that, it just, Listen for that decay, then come, then more. One other thing 